Hi guys and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. In front of us stands the brand new and pretty popular Arctic Accelero S3 passive aftermarket VGA cooler. This is their third generation of Accelero cooler. Before that we had S1 Plus and the original S1 in two revisions. On the front of the box you can see the whole cooler assembly as well as a notion of a long six year warranty and the fact that in this revision you don't have to use any glue or double sided tapes so you can easily reuse the cooler on another graphics card. Going around the box you can see some specifications of the cooler and the list of support graphics card for it and although at the moment the official support for the GTX 960 wasn't on the box yet, by now it came in on the Arctix website and probably on the newer revision of the product box. Depending on the graphics card model, some need additional cooling in a form of fan or at least a good ventilated case, but we are going to talk about that later on once we start testing. On the back of the box you can see a more detailed overview of the cooler components as well as a cooling performance example on the AMD's R9270 graphics card. Taking a look inside of the box, on the top part of it you will find all the screws and pieces needed for the installation, thermal pads, PC Express shield for the third row, support bracket for the graphics card, And below it in the second compartment we have a user manuals and installation guide, protective plastic cover, big chunk of aluminium heatsink that's actually serving as a backplate, and finally here we have the cooler itself. Our donor card for this little project was the recently reviewed MSI GTX 960 Gaming 2G edition and since it has a reference design PCB and that's actually the only kind which Arctic approves if you plan to apply their Accelero S3 cooler, we shouldn't get into any problems installation wise. Disassembling the MSI's cooler was a pretty easy and straightforward job and after we finished with that we cleaned up the contact surface of the chip and prepared ourselves for the next step of installing the Arctic Accelero S3 cooler. As you may notice, the GTX 960 doesn't actually use all the available space, which is great in a way we don't have any additional heat coming off of it, plus the MSI's model actually has a passive heatsink cooling on the power regulation, alongside of the MSI's superferric chokes and other above average components that generate less heat. As you can see here, you don't need a lot of parts for cooler installation, and although you can put the cooler onto the car pretty fast, coming to that point and realizing what goes where, especially in terms of compatibility, can be a bit tricky because of the rather clustered installation guide. Everything is compressed on one sheet of paper, with all different possible graphics card combinations and scenarios, which can make stuff difficult when you try to follow down the installation steps. Our case was particularly messy since we didn't have instructions for the GTX 960 installation, but we did it somehow by following the steps for the GTX GTX 760. Depending on the graphics card, you have to choose between two different brackets and once you are done with that, you have to put the long installation screws and standoffs on them. After that, the next move is to go to the back side of the graphics card. Although we actually didn't need them as much as some other graphics card maybe do, we put some thermal pads on a few spots like VRAM chips and power regulations and some other places. We needed to do it despite of that since you have to level off the backplate heatsink so it doesn't get in direct contact with other components and possibly short circuit something. Finally we threaded through the cooler part and its screws to the other side of the graphics card and connected it up with the backplate, secured it down and that was pretty much it. In the end we didn't use the plastic protective cover since this won't be a long term setup and also the clamps which additionally secure the backplate. There is really no need for them in our opinion as everything is tight enough like it is, plus we couldn't align it properly since the fittings wouldn't let us. The support bracket wasn't used at all also as we did our testing on an open test bench. 
Now we can finally take a closer look at the cooler itself and as you can notice we have 4 6mm copper heat pipes and the big surface with not that dense 32 aluminium fins to take the heat off of them and like that all of this makes a really good base for a great cooling potential. Not to mention the big back plate with heat sinks on it which job in the first place is actually to cool down the power regulation in VRAM while also helping out a bit with cooling down the GPU and the rest of the components. That said, putting the S3 into testing in a completely passive environment in idle, we were getting below 30 degrees Celsius, while under load in Furmark, we went hot pretty fast and over 90 degrees Celsius, so we stopped that testing at one point. But don't get your hopes down, as in more likely scenario like playing games or to be specific Far Cry 4 in our case, we were getting just about 80 degrees Celsius, which is bearable and might I say normal for a completely passive solution. All of the GTX 960 is just on the border with its 120 watt TDP as the S3 cooler supports up to 135 watts when it comes to completely passive cooling solution and that's why we were probably seeing maybe a bit higher temperatures, plus there's the fact that the MSI's model is factory overclocked. Between that 135 watt and 200 watt mark, it's recommended to use Artex Turbo module or DIY yourself a fan on it. If you have a well ventilated case, you should get much lower temperature than those and we actually proved that in a way by taking a 1200 RPM PWVM fan from Noctua's Redux series and put it few centimeters away from the S3 as we got really really impressive numbers. Under 50 degrees Celsius while playing Far Cry 4 and also just below 60 degrees Celsius mark in Furmark stress testing. Thank you once again guys for checking out our unboxing and review of the Artix Acelero S3 Passive Graphics Card Cooler. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you liked this video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to our Technic YouTube channel or you can check out our other videos from before.